This video looks at the key skills required to answer projectile questions. So we've got a ball being thrown at an angle of 30 degrees from a height of 1.5 meters with an initial speed of 40 meters per second. Acceleration is acting downwards, which will take to equal 9.8 downwards, and we'll assume that no air resistance, so there's therefore no horizontal acceleration. Now the trick to this sort of question is to split into components, horizontal and vertical components of motion. And the first step is always to resolve the initial speed into the adjacent and opposite components. So, the adjacent component will be cos, so 40 cos 30. So, ux will equal 40 cos 30, which equals 20 root 3. And uy, the initial velocity vertically, will equal 40 sine 30. That's opposite the angle. So that just equals 20. Horizontally, a equals 0, but vertically, a equals minus 9.8. We can now use the constant acceleration formula to write down equations of motion. So, v horizontally, that equals u plus a t, but u equals 20 root 3, and a equals 0. So v of x will equal 20 root 3. And its position, which is we'll called s of x, that will equal ut plus a half a t squared plus any initial position. So s of x will equal ut, that's 20 root 3 t, a is 0, it's got no initial horizontal position, so s x will equal 20 root 3 t. So that's our velocity at time t, and that's our position at times t in the horizontal direction. Now vertically, we use the same rules. So we can find velocity in the y direction. That's still u plus a t, but u is now 20. But a is minus 9.8, so it's 20 minus 9.8 t. Due to acceleration acting downwards, the velocity vertically is always changing. And finally, the position in the y direction, that would equal ut, which is 20t. Then a half a, a half of a is minus 4.9t squared, and it's got an initial position, so we can add on that 1.5. So there's our expression for the vertical velocity, and there's the expression for the vertical position. And it is these four equations which we use to solve problems, which we'll now look at. So, we have two key problems to solve. Problem one. How high does the ball actually get? Now a ball gets to the top of its flight and stops for an instant. So we get to the top when vy equals zero. Now vy was 20 minus 9.8t. So the question is, when does that equal zero? Well that equals zero when t equals 20 over 9.8. Point eight, which equals 2.04 seconds. So that's when the ball gets to the top. The question is, is how high does it get? 
So the question is, is what does s of y equal at that time? Well, s of y was 20, lots of t, minus 4.9, lots of t squared, plus the initial position. And if you put that into a calculator, you get 21.9 metres. So the ball travels up by 21.9 metres. Right. The next question is, what is the range of the ball? Now the range is how far the ball actually travels. So when does it hit the ground, and how far has it gone? So the ball hits the ground when s y equals zero. So if we can solve when 20t minus 4.9t squared plus 1.5 equals zero, this tells us when the ball gets to its first point. I tend to rearrange this. If I add the terms across the other side, I get zero equals plus 4.9t squared minus 20t minus 1.5. And this is a quadratic equation to solve. So we use a formula. So t will equal minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a equals 4.9, b equals minus 20, and c equals minus 1.5. If you put these values into the equation, you find the positive time is at 4.155 seconds. You get two solutions actually, you get a negative time which is meaningless and a positive time, 4.155 seconds, which is when the ball lands. But the question was is, what is the range of the ball? So the question is, is how far does it go horizontally at that time? So in other words, s of x was 20, root 3, lots of t, which we've now found to be that, to work that out and find it is 144 metres to free SF.